So, I guess we're gonna take a look at Tim Pool. Tim Pool, hip with the kids, skateboarder, and beanie aficionado, has made a video about Texas GOP calling for secession from the United States. Now, I don't know if any of you are history buffs out there, but as it turns out, seceding from the United States has historically gone very badly for those who attempt it. So, let's see Tim Pool's very insightful opinion on this turn of events. The Supreme Court has rejected the Texas lawsuit that would have seen the election results overturned. The quick gist is that Texas said these four states violated the electors clause of the Constitution. I find it questionable that Tim Pool even says that it would have the election results overturned. The Texas lawsuit was specifically about Pennsylvania. And even if you took away Pennsylvania's electoral votes from Biden, he would still win with the other states. So that's a very strange and inaccurate thing for him to say by changing the election rules without approval of the state legislatures. All of a sudden, these states are pouring in 20 on one side, 20 on the other side, state lining up against state. 126 members of the Republican House signed onto this, but it has been struck down. And with this, my friends, many on the left are saying, it's over for Trump. It is over and there is nothing he can do. But I'm here. Yeah, um, again, the Electoral College meets on Monday, so it's all over but the crying, you know? I'm here to tell you they're wrong. First of all, Alan West has alluded to seceding from the Union, and that's the big story we'll get to in a second. But my friends, there's one very, very simple thing that Donald Trump and his supporters can do right now to guarantee that he wins come Monday capitalism. with the Electoral College vote. Why the Geminids are coming on Monday and with 120 meteors per hour and 74 million Trump voters and roughly about 10 hours of night, excluding dusk and dawn, 88.8 .8 billion wishes that Donald Trump somehow wins on Monday. I'm kidding, by the way. That's not, I just thought it was funny. What they can <laughs> Scotty the Scott, thank you for subscribing with Prime with a three month streak. I don't think anything is is more emblematic of the the right's current position than Tim Pool ironically wishing for Trump supporters to literally wish on stars for Donald Trump to win the election somehow. Actually do is, I don't know, maybe win their appeal in the, in the Wisconsin Supreme Court, considering the Wisconsin Supreme Court is conservative, it's my understanding, from NPR. Wisconsin Supreme Court will take up Trump lawsuit appeal to overturn Biden win. Look, the Texas lawsuit was very clearly There's the best shot the that Trump had, and it was the biggest with a rising tide on. If that was Trump's best shot, then he is effed, which we've been saying since the election results were concluded. Logarth the 20 bits, Tim Pool kick flips into oblivion. <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. All sides or both sides rising up and saying yes and no. A major dispute of the election. The Supreme Court said Texas has no standing to sue based on how other states have their uh, elections. I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm not a fan of that ruling. The way I see it is, imagine we enter into a contract that we're going to contribute something to the, you know, to the, to, uh, let's say we all live together in an apartment. And I say, we're all going to contribute to paying the rent. And then, and we want everybody to pay the rent, you know, freely and fairly. But one of your roommates is dealing drugs. You're going to be like, dude, we, no way, man. Not, a, not You can't be doing that. And they're like, you have no right to determine how he pays his rent. Are you comparing a state allowing mail-in votes to dealing drugs? Very disingenuous. The decision was because Texas doesn't have a right to tell Pennsylvania they can't send mail-in ballots to people. That's what it's over. I don't know why you're comparing it to some sort of drug deal situation outside of you're trying to manipulate people into thinking that it's somehow reasonable when it's not. The states run their own elections. The sovereignty of the states was at issue here, right? If they had taken up this case and gone in favor of Texas, which I don't even... Right-wingers are so, so short-sighted. If they had taken up this case and decided in favor of Texas, then California the could capitalism. sue Texas for like like voter ID laws, or they'd be able to sue other like states for different election things that they don't like. It's a terrible idea. 
Oboan with 100 bits. Trump's best capitalism. shot was winning the popular vote. He didn't even win the popular vote in 2016, but sure, getting more votes would certainly help. MMO addicted with 20 bits. How dare you, chat? How dare you, Hannah? Hello, fellow kids. Is my identity to have PIM tool associated with it in a deeply personal insult? Hoverboards away, backwards in a dramatic pose. God, I feel silly today. Must be my new meds. And then Cacao Juniper with 20 bits. Oh, I get it. Tim Pool is an idiot. <laughs> That's usually the lesson of Tim Pool videos. Uh, technically, the truth. And maybe not a perfect analogy, but the point is, why should I be trapped in a contract with someone else who's doing unlawful things and then using that to get advantages over everybody else? So not a perfect analogy, but the point is, I think, it, I think it's... How is Pennsylvania getting, like, your... What was the exact phrasing there? Using that to get advantages... How is Pennsylvania have an advantage over Texas because they allowed mail-in voting... That's just within their own state. If Texas also wanted to have mail-in voting, they could have done it. And maybe they did. I don't know what Texas's, like, rules were in terms of mail-in voting this election cycle. But if they wanted to do more mail-in voting, they could have. Every state is in charge of its own election. Over everybody else. So not a perfect analogy, but the point is, I think, it, I think, it's, I, I think Texas's uh, lawsuit made a lot of sense. Not a lawyer. Brilliant legal mind. Tim Poole, who thought there might be a 50-state blowout for Trump. Legal expert. And there's left-wing left uh, pundits and right-wing pundits who completely disagree on the merits. But the important thing is that the Texas law... Most importantly, the Supreme Court, they said nah. I think that's the important point here, Tim. Catalina Gearbox with $3 wanted to show you my cyberpunk COVID mask that glows. Let me take a look. There's nothing funny about the tools of capitalism. Are you talking in this video or anything? Just because I, I didn't have audio for some reason. I've been having audio issues with uh, Twitter videos the if there is. Capitalism. Now it's not wanting to play. I can scrub through though. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Nice. Very glowy. There's nothing funny about the tools of capitalism. Uh, MMO addicted with 20 bets. How dare you, chat? How dare- Oh, no, I already read that one. Sorry. Daddy Sume with 20 bets. Because we aren't worth as many electoral votes. Wari. Texas is big. It should have as many points as California. As we all know, land does vote. MMO addicted to 20 pits. Honestly, uh, though that meme encompasses me perfectly. Living in Poland and spending most of my time with y'all, it makes me uh, like a boomer, despite being in your age category, Hannah. Like, I don't get any contemporary youthful language and shit without having to research them to fit in. That's not very poggers of you, as the kids would say. <laughs> uh, Andrew Battelle with 20 bits, so your roommate is dealing drugs, and you have a problem with how his drug dealing affects the rent? <laughs> lawsuit was not ruled on the merits. It wasn't. They just said Texas has no standing. Already there have been emergency filings by other lawyers claiming that their clients, I believe Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood may have filed something saying their clients do have standing. It's not, you know, look, it's not over. It is a fact that it is not over. On It's basically over. What was it? On November 7th, when they announced Biden was the winner, they kept saying, it's over. Give up. It's been over. You know what the most annoying thing to me right now is? Seeing journalists tweeting memes at the president. I'm like, you're not journalists. One, one dude posts them. MAGA people love memes until someone else memes on them. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're using memes. Yeah. It's 2020. Everyone uses memes. Moving truck in response to Trump. And I'm like... Are you going to report the news? No, they're going to lie. I'll tell you, it is not over until Joe Biden is in the White House. And even then, it might not end. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tim. They don't get it. They don't understand what's happening. They think the Republican Party represents what's happening. It does not. So all of these Republicans... I would imagine the Republican establishment, the second Donald Trump is no longer in power, they're going to want to move past him as quickly as possible because they know he's really bad for their image. Can sign on, sign on to the Texas lawsuit, in my opinion, because they saw what would happen, what happened to Loeffler and Purdue. And so they said, okay, I'll voice my support for Trump. But short of that, Republicans ain't going to do anything. And Trump supporters know that.
which is why well, maybe there are some Republicans, because here's the actual big news. Funny about the tools Texas of GOP chair Alan West suggests law-abiding states should form a union after Supreme Court rejects lawsuit on election results. There's a uh, Bear Breathing, thank you for following, and Andrew Batella with 20 bits. The goalposts are outside the observable universe. He left the door open for a future goalpost shift. They always do, at least the smart ones. Relatively smart ones. Tim. Do you think that seceding from the Union the is a good idea? Because historically, no, no it's not. Actually, a state house rep in Texas who has proposed a bill to have Texas, I don't know if he, if he wants them to secede from the Union now, but to assert their right as a sovereign nation to be able to secede. Although I suppose many people are citing the first civil war as, uh, the first civil war, how about that? as precedent that you have no right to secede. <laughs> but this is the most important part because I believe this... this what we yeah, it's been decided law for a very long time that you can't secede from the union. You cannot unilaterally, as a state, decide we want to leave the union. Theoretically, I think they could, like... If the federal government was amenable to it, they could, like, get into negotiations to do so. But, like, Texas or any other state can't just say, we are seceding from the union, we don't want any input from the federal government. You can't do it. Colossus TV with 20 bits, I thought Pog meant piece of garbage. That was confusing. <laughs> See here from Alan West, better represents what people who support Trump are actually thinking. There have been, uh, you know, so I have Luke, Luke Rutkowski of We Are Change on the IRL podcast. He says we need a divorce. Then I have Michael Malice on the podcast as well. He wrote back in 2016, we need a divorce. Michael's a smart guy. He made a really great point. He said Barack Obama passes the ACA and then mandates everyone buy insurance. And that's considered acceptable. He says, then why not have a, a mandate that everyone buy a gun? Because that's that's. <laughs> Those two things are very similar, and not at all a ridiculous comparison. MMO addicted to 20 bits. We need uh, more fun channel points redeeming options. Those are pretty unpog. Turns to chat. Did I do well? Was that hip and cool? Colossus TV, one way or another, change must come. <laughs> Starting the negotiation from the right-wing point of view. I think I'm probably getting the gist of his idea correctly. If not, you should guys should follow him. He's a smart guy. We just had him the other night on, on, on the show. But it's an interesting point. Conservatives are always chasing the left. The left says, we're going to enact this policy, and the right says, no. How about the right says, we're going to enact this policy, and the left says, no. How about you get a Republican who goes to Congress and say, I'm proposing... That would require Republicans to have ideas, which is not their strong suit. ...proposing a universal government uh, gun program. It is a right in the Constitution. Why won't a Republican do that? A uh, right is not a requirement, right? Saying you have the right to do something doesn't necessarily mean you can mandate that thing. We have a right to vote in the United States, but we don't have a vote mandate. Because the Republicans are just chasing after the left. And I feel like for the most part, for the longest time, well, I don't know about the longest time, but at least for, for the re recent history, Republicans have just been sitting there like lazily, you know, half, half you know, their, their arms up and their eyes half closed like that Bugs Bunny meme. And the Republicans come in and say, I'm angry about this thing. And they go, oh, There's nothing funny about the I'll yell at them. And then it goes to Congress and the Republican goes, you Democrats with your Obamacare. Uh, OK, anyway, uh, lunch. And then they leave. Take a look at what, what Trump said about, uh, uh, you know, Obamacare and all this stuff. He did get rid of the individual mandate, which was huge. But did they get rid of uh, uh, Obamacare? Did the they present, create something new? They, did, they didn't. No shit. It's because they have no ideas. MMO addicted to 20 bits. I mean, the first time I saw poggers used, I thought it was a racial slur, and it was under a video which showed someone in an unflattering light. Oh, that's a shame. But no, it's not. DM Trey with 20 bits. What is this nonsense about Republicans having any policy? Hey, chat, how it be? <laughs> Trump did some stuff, but I think people on the right who follow Trump and support him have been actually waiting for their side to actually propose and do something. But what do we get? Demands for universal health care and a big debate over whether that should be the case. Literally no debate from a right perspective on what universal program they would want. Because they don't have one. Their answer is no. Starve, peasants. Die of cancer. 
and be glad we didn't kill you. That's the right wing perspective. Perhaps it's because the Republicans don't want the government to be spending all of that money because that kind of defeats the purpose. And that's probably, you know, one of the biggest problems with universal uh, health care. No, it's not. We already spend more money than any other developed nation on health care and we get worse results because it's profit driven. Because there are middlemen all throughout that are making money as part of the apparatus of the healthcare industry. It would cost Americans less money to have universal health care. General, but you don't get a, a, a right-centric proposal the left freaks out about, for the most part, for the most part. So check it out. Regular people now, here's what we're seeing. The chairman of the Republican Party of Texas has suggested law-abiding states should form a union after the Supreme Court rejected the Texas lawsuit. Honestly, do we just want to let him go this time and then watch the South as it devolves into an a, a, a undeveloped nation? Have we seen that before? Have we seen a developed nation undevelop back into like a... <laughs> oh, that would be really bad for them. As it turns out, I don't know if you guys know this, but red states, especially red states in the South... Um, tend to take the most from the federal budget in terms of social programs, whereas blue states like California and New York pay into it. So if you took away all the red states, the America, the federal government that would only include blue states, would be much better off. <laughs> I don't... I... It would be bad, but if you guys want to go, I'm not going to stop you. The court's ya. decision was made on Friday evening after the lawsuit was brought forth by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton this week and backed up by President Trump 16 other attorneys, and 126 members of Congress. The lawsuit sought to throw out millions of votes in the four battleground states of Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. The chairman of the GOP, uh, Alan West, and this is, like, this is, Alan West is not some random dude. There's nothing like, Alan West is a prominent figure. He said, quote, this Lily loves stuff with 20 bits. The problem is that they would disenfranchise many, uh, 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 <coughs> uh, 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 I, w I never know how to pronounce this acronym. Black and indigenous people of color further. I'm not sure how. Do you say, like, BIPOC or BIPOC? How do you normally say that? I see it written a lot, and I know what it stands for. I just don't know. There's nothing funny about I don't know specifically what, uh, how you say it. The problem is that these, uh, that they're being disenfranchised by gerrymandering in their states. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Kathy7407 with 100 bits. A friend I There's usually talk to about, about social issues with was way more quick to respond and interested when I was telling about personal problems than he ever has about political talk. I think that really shows something about him. I'm very happy today. And then Scotty the Scott with 100 bits. You want to see a nation devolve? Keep an eye on the UK from January 1st. Please help. Claire the Egg with 20 bits. If it wasn't leaving... Uh, off a bunch of LGBT and minority youth and other people that can't escape, it'd be much more in favor. I agree. Yeah. Buy POC. Okay. Supreme Court, in tossing the Texas lawsuit that was joined by 17 states and 106 congressmen. Let me slow down there. It's There's actually, it was joined by 19 states and 126 congressmen. Have decreed that a state can take unconstitutional actions and violate its own election law resulting in damaging effects on other states that abide by the law. Again, Pennsylvania didn't break its own election law. Towing 24 of 20 beds never thought the free state of Austin would be a real thing, but the army of mercenaries Google would buy to protect their shit would make it happen. Yeah, you're not... Yeah, that'd be interesting. We're getting to a cyberpunk future really, really quick. Funny how that worked out. While the guilty state suffers no consequences, this decision establishes a precedent that says states can violate the U.S. Constitution and not be held accountable. This decision will have far-reaching ramifications for the future of our constitutional republic. Perhaps law-abiding states should bond together and form a union of states that will abide by the Constitution. They say, West is a retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel and was a U.S. congressman in Florida from 2011 to 2013. He was elected as chairman of the Texas GOP July 20th, 2020, unseating former uh, chairman James Dickey. Friday's decision was the second this week by the Supreme Court regarding requests by Republicans to get the nation's highest court involved in the election results. The court has, had rejected an appeal from Republicans in Pennsylvania on Tuesday. That's not true. I'm just so sick of the media and they're, and they're just, they don't try. They're going to say the Electoral College will meet on Monday, December 14th. So there is news in the Republican lawsuit pertaining to Act 77 in Pennsylvania. 
they denied emergency injunctive relief, which for all intents and purposes is probably a defeat for the Republicans, because if the election gets certified and the electors, uh, the electors are, 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 are counted, then uh, are the electoral vote. Oh, let, let me slow down. Challenging the election law in Pennsylvania may not actually have anything to do with this election. Kind of. We'll see. Mike Kelly and Sean Parnell are plaintiffs on this, among other people. And Sean Parnell said they don't know what the relief will be. Maybe it won't be to throw out this election, but to say in the next election, you need a constitutional amendment to do mail-in voting, which would still be a really good thing for Republicans. What the Supreme... Isn't it nice when right-wingers completely admit openly that people being enfranchised to vote, like mail-in voting, which helps especially low-income people to vote because they can do so at their convenience. Isn't it nice when Republicans just openly admit that it's bad for them when more people get to vote? The under 92 with 20 bits, what's incredible is that if this had any chance of happening, all tech would move away and all Texas would be left with is cows and hillbillies. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. Court said as they denied emergency injunctive relief. This means Biden electors will go to the Electoral College on Monday, likely cast their votes, and that's it. But the Supreme Court has not dismissed the case. It's still pending. Does that mean they'll pick it up? Still probably not. But now the latest development is that Parnell and uh, the other plaintiffs have asked for a, a uh, I forgot what it's called, uh, um, a writ of cert or something. They've requested cert. They want the case to be ruled on the merits, regardless of emergency injunctive relief. What happens? If come the 14th, they send 20 electors from Pennsylvania just for Biden, and then they cast their votes. But then between December 14th and January 6th, when the votes start to be counted, the Supreme Court actually says, yes, this was unconstitutional. Toss it out. Well, then I, I don't think that's going to happen. But if that did, there's a process in Congress by which when they certify the election results from the Electoral College that I think you need both chambers of Congress, both the Senate and the House, to have some sort of agreement on electoral votes to throw out. But if there's not an agreement, they get counted. So on January 6th, the Republicans are going to raise objections saying the Supreme Court ruled that your votes don't count. I don't think that's going to happen, though, because even if the Supreme Court made some ruling in terms of election law, they would never throw away millions and millions of people's votes. They're just not going to do it. Colossus TV with 20 bits. Hot take. I played Cyberpunk for 10 hours last night, and it's a really good game despite the bugs. It's a complex game. I've only scratched the surface, mostly doing the campaign for street kids at the moment, not really touching any side quests or anything. Like, I kept trying to find a stopping point, and I ended up sleeping through a meeting. To be honest, the game will only improve from here. Hopefully. I find the AI to be really, really bad, and, like, the cars don't drive... They're on, like, set paths. Like, you know in, like, GTA or something, if you start doing something, the cars will freak out and they'll, like, they have AI, you know? They'll, like, react to what's going on around them. In Cyberpunk, all the cars are just, like, on tracks, basically. So it's kind of off-putting. I don't know if they'll ever patch that, but it, it takes me out of it. Maybe I'm nitpicking, though. The left keeps saying it's over. It has been over. It's been pathetic seeing you people try and overturn democracy because you don't like that Trump lost. It's ridiculous, and you should all be ashamed of yourselves. There are a few leftist personalities, with respect. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't want to drag them, but they've been warning the left. It is not over until Joe Biden is in the White House. And you also need to understand, just because That's Joe Biden's right, in the White House propaganda. doesn't mean that Trump goes away and his supporters give up. It would be nice, though. Armor and Quills, thank you for following. The next four years, I imagine, will be uh, Trump grifting his followers for money. Capitalism. He has a lot of bills coming due, and he's going to get that money from his supporters. MMO addicted to 20 bits. Try diving a bu driving a bike in Cyberpunk. It may randomly start to bounce, then fly through the air. The entire city trying to render it once, causing either a crash or nearly frying the GPU and lowering the frame rate to 1 to 3 frames per second. Yeah, it's technically a mess. I don't think they will. I think Trump is leading the charge of something that's not just about the Republican Party. It's a right populist movement. And I mean, look at what Alan West said about a union of states forming their own, uh, you know, union that will abide by the Constitution. <laughs> what if Trump said, I would like to be that leader? And then you have a fraction of, uh, 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 you know, factionaliz factionalization or a divorce or a splitting. 
You know, Michael's, Michael Malice said the other day on, on, on the IRL podcast, there's this uh, blue-pilled view that civil war is always violent, but there could be a peaceful decoupling of the United States. Nope. Absolutely impossible. The federal government, and we've seen this play out. It might be one thing if the civil war never happened, and you're like, well, we don't know. We don't know what happens if states try and secede. We know what happens when states try and secede. Anyone who tells anyone, particularly Tim Pool here, because I, I think Tim Pool's not the most intelligent person, but I think he's smart enough to know that this is bullshit. But I think he thinks it's a more palatable pill to try and get people to swallow if he says to his right-wing audience, we could do a civil war, it would just be, you know, it'd be a peaceful secession, wink wink, knowing that, of course, once it gets that far, all bets are off, and there's not gonna be peace, you know what I mean? Like, completely disingenuous. Bullshit, Tim. You know better. I don't know. I, I, I think that's a really, really bad thing for, for a lot of reasons. We're a great nation. And many Republicans have said, you can't take our states, these big cities. But there's, there's interesting points to be made about what goes on in this country and the different cultural issues. Look, you have one side that says children, um, uh, children that are trans should be able to get chemical treatments to a puberty blockers. Yes. Firm their identity. On the right, they say, absolutely not. You, you know, no way. Joe Biden supported this specifically saying there should be no discrimination if a child chooses to be transgender. Without condemning or condoning, I'm just pointing out. I mean, You don't choose to be transgender. You either are transgender or you're not. You don't choose to be transgender any more than you choose to be gay or straight or anything. That is a very, very, like, disparate. These, these are so far removed from each other. When I was uh, talking to Jack Dorsey and Vijay Gaudi in the Joe Rogan podcast, one of the most important things brought up was that their rules are biased for the left. They have a misgendering policy on Twitter that if you call someone who is trans by the, you know, not, not the correct pronouns. They yeah, because it's a dick move. They, not, not by, by they just want to be assholes with no consequences so badly. That's the entirety of the right's ethos at this point is just, I want to hurt other people and I don't want anyone to fight me on it at all. I want to bully other people and not have any consequences. It's like their entire worldview and I don't understand it. Logarth with 20 bits relevant content. I'll take a look. I'm unable to view this tweet. I'm blocked by whoever this is, apparently. <laughs> There's nothing funny about the tools of capitalism. Pronouns they don't want. MMO addicted with 20 bits, God damn it! What magical weed they smoke to be able to, to, to choose who, where you are born. Get some, because chanting I wish wasn't born in Poland doesn't work. I've tried it for 20 years, yeah. You've broken the rules. And I said, that is only a, a thing in the left. The right doesn't, the, the right has an inverted view of misgendering. Thus, we have two very different realities here. So what do we do? Yeah, yours is incorrect and doesn't give a shit about trans people. That's why you aren't taken as seriously by companies like that, because companies care about having a user base that's as diverse and wide as possible, right? I think there are more people who are in favor, at least in the online spaces, because they tend to skew younger I think there are more people who are in favor of trans people being treated with basic human decency than there are shitbags on the right who just want to bully people. Keep fighting each other until both sides, like, you know, politically, until both sides just take it, you know, it, it comes to street clashes, which apparently there was fighting last night in D.C., and there's going to be huge rallies today in, in, in D.C. as well. They're marching on the Supreme Court and through D.C. for Trump, Stop the Steel rally, all that stuff. We're getting to a point where the cultures are so far removed from each other. Seriously, the right to bear arms, the right to run your business. One side says the pandemic, lock everything down. Nobody works. Government pays for it. The other side is saying, let me live my life and take my own risks. Those can't work. Yeah, you can't take your own risks without putting other people at risk in regard to a disease. That's not how it works. Together. And now you're getting people essentially rising up in the streets and saying no to this. Maybe the, what makes the most sense is a union of states that uh, they tends to agree with each other. The issue is the East Coast and the West Coast, the blue states, the red states, 
there's no clear dividing line like North and South. So what? The West Coast becomes its own place. The East Coast becomes its own place. You wouldn't just get two countries. You'd get three or four. I remember that old internet meme from, I think it was John Titor or John Titor. I can't remember. I don't know how to pronounce his name. For those that aren't familiar, it was his old meme. Is he going to talk about the fake time traveler? Are you fucking serious, Tim? Where somebody uh, claimed to be from the future. They weren't. It was probably just, you know, a blog where a guy was making stuff up. But predicted that the U.S. would There's fracture into four different countries. The East Coast would be very much aligned with Europe. The uh, Midwest, the, the northern Midwest. The most inappropriate Easter egg in cyberpunk. I probably can't show it then if it's that inappropriate. <laughs> okay, I get it. Yeah, fuck CD Projekt Red for making their employees crunch like they have. Uh, areas would be aligned with Canada. The West Coast would be aligned with China, and the South would be fairly independent. <laughs> the West or Coast would be with aligned Mexico. with China. I that think it's just silly internet memes from back in the day of people speculating. But it seems that, that there's something that could be a real possibility of this. If the U.S. was to actually break up as to what Alan West was saying, there's nothing funny about the we would no longer be a global power. There would be questions as to who controls the military bases around the world, who would be in charge of them. Probably Washington, D.C., and the other states would say no. There are many economists who are saying, if the red states broke yeah, away right. from the blue states, propaganda. they would be a third world nation. Uh, sure, except you're yeah. now miscounting the fact that the blue states have destroyed their economies. And what? No, no, they haven't. The blue states are where most of the money in the country is made. What are you talking about? Money from blue states goes to the federal government where it subsidizes red states aren't producing much but they're dragging everybody down the gdp is tanking in many of these places and new york just shuttered indoor dining so is philadelphia i believe los angeles has so uh, and outdoor so at this point i think the red states might just be okay but you know there is something to be said about, about red states being capitalism. sparsely populated to a certain degree and uh, not having as large of urban scent more appropriate easter eggs don't know if you know this but most perk icons are references let me look Yeah. That's pretty cool. Hmm. But you also got to understand that places like New York, New York State is, you get rid of New York City and it's a, it's a red state. You get, you get rid of... <laughs> if you get rid of the vast majority of the population, that's not how it works, Tim. You absolute moron... <laughs> If you get rid of the place where most of the people in the state live. Chicago and Illinois is a red state. And uh, for California, you've got San Francisco and you've got Los Angeles. But it's it, very much red in a lot of ways. So if these cities, which are, you know, massive portions of the population, were not included, you wouldn't have. If we just discount where most of the people in the United States live, if we just remove most United States citizens, then we actually win. Yeah, you're describing being a minority political position, Tim. You're describing being in the minority. Uh, a, a blue state. Of course, these cities literally can't sustain themselves without support from the agricultural and rural areas. Is your big brain moment that cities need food? Yeah, and rural areas need the infrastructure and economic uh, uh, benefits of cities. Of That's kind of why we're a country and states, Tim. Uh, tired park with 20 beds. Bit of an interesting thought, though. Are there any rural areas in the U.S. that are more left than typical rural areas? I'm actually not sure. Let me tell you what's going on. All right. The other day when I talked about 44 states disputing the president, and now we're learning Supreme Court said no. The specific point I was trying to make is no one cares. Like They do. They do. Right. The Trump supporters were hoping the Supreme Court would intervene and say, you guys, I. Right. All right. Trump wins. The left was like, no, they'll dismiss it. Well, the Supreme Court effectively sided with the left on this one. Does that mean the Trump supporters are going to be like, what? They sided with the Constitution on this one. Again, reality has a well-known liberal bias, so. Well, good game, guys. No. It means they're going to start defying. What I think we're going to start seeing is 
In the next There's six months or so, the next year, of capitalism. Stuart Rhodes of the Oath Keepers has already said they won't regard anything out of Joe Biden's mouth as legitimate. Not Lovely. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. Without the factories and cities, farms couldn't run. What is your point, you brainlet? Our economy is interdependent? Yeah. He's selectively picking the things that cities are inter are dependent on rural areas for and not doing the same in reverse. It's very stupid. Just him, like half the country. So that certainly means at least the oath, oh, at least the oath keepers won't. They're gonna. Uh, Joe Biden wants a nationwide lockdown. N not he didn't say it personally. He said I'll follow the science. And his chief advisor, the guy he brought on, said six weeks lockdown. But Joe Biden did say national mask mandate. I think because of the draconian edict that is being passed down by these governors and what's soon to be Biden, plus with the lawlessness from the far left, you're going to have areas just saying we, we object, we reject. So you're going to have a bunch of people on the right in rural areas saying we don't do that here. And, and you are going to fuck everything up as you have been all year round. This is your fault, guys. People on the right, this shit is your fault. Let's see what the de U.S. COVID deaths. We're at almost 300,000 and it's raising every day. We're almost having 9-11 level. Oh, we are. We're at 9-11 level death counts daily. This is your fault. And I know y'all don't have any empathy, so you're not going to care. But I wish you did. So for a single day, you could feel the burden of what you fuckers have done. It's ridiculous. What's the U.S. government going to do? Send in, you know, federal agents to enforce mask laws? Probably not. So Joe Biden's plan just will not work. But let's say there's a more densely populated area, not particularly large, but maybe a decent sized city of a couple hundred thousand in a red state. Maybe they just say, you know what? There's We're done. Lockdown's over. Biden is not the president. Something like that. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. These numbers aren't from COVID, though. The hospitals are lying to get more money from the government. I know you're joking. But no, don't say that, even though it's a joke. Andrew Batella with 20 bits. Is the U.S. beating China in deaths, though? I don't know. I wouldn't even, if I saw China's numbers, I wouldn't necessarily trust them anyway. So, Cupcake Chaos 300,000 is... Uh, is BBN the out of the population of Orlando? I don't know what BBN means. Well, then Biden may actually send in DHS or some kind of enforcement. You will probably then start end up seeing right wing militias or even local sheriffs setting up checkpoints and saying, you can't come in here. And again, if you did that, then the military would come in and arrest them. If you try and secede from the union, that's that's a crime. Sedition is a crime. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. Funny That's what my parents are saying. It's infuriating no end, I'd imagine so. Oh, Cupcake Chaos is about. Gotcha. It's the population of Orlando. Okay. These rules can't be enforced. I think maybe the first thing you'll see is some kind of federal enforcement. Maybe the CDC might go to an area and then tell these restaurants, you have to lock down. The restaurants will say, get out. So the sheriffs are going to be like, these are, you know, this is our town. Saying, they'll say no. The fear I have, and I'm not saying it's extremely likely, I'm just saying... I view this as a strong possibility. People will start rejecting these edict as unconstitutional and a violation of their rights. But a bigger question emerges. If we can reject this, why not anything else? You know, interestingly, the other day uh, when we were on I, last night on the IRL podcast, we did a show it was Alex Jones and Michael Malice, the round two, because they banned the, they, they, they took down the first one. So we did it again. Huh? Michael Malice mentioned that he thought all cops were, uh, were corrupt and he wants to abolish the police. And he actually made a really important point. He says the Constitution guarantees his right to bear arms. And because of these police, he cannot protect himself in New York City. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ender 92 at 20 bits. Can you not take literally one step back and see that he's literally talking about seceding over wearing a thin piece of cloth over his mouth while shopping? Unreal. No, he can't. He's Tim Pool. That's a good point. Every single cop in New York will violate the Second Amendment as it's written. No, they won't. What happens when people think like Michael does and they live in a city and they... Reasonable gun restrictions aren't against your Second Amendment right. Are you in a well-regulated militia? If not, what are you talking about? Say, I'm not going to follow this edict and that law is unconstitutional and we all know it. 
and they, they no longer have confidence in those officers uh, or, or in that law. What happens when even the cops in these smaller towns say, good point? Because we already saw, saw sheriffs all across Virginia say when Virginia tried passing these gun control laws, they wouldn't enforce it. Well, what about the big cities that do just blindly enforce their gun control laws in violation of the Constitution? The blue city. <laughs> the framing that like city or state laws about gun control are against the Second Amendment is so dishonest. Tim, if they were unconstitutional, the Supreme Court would overturn them because I'm sure the NRA or some other special interest group has already tried to sue about these specific regulations you're talking about. Stop acting like any gun regulation is against the Second Amendment, because it's not. If they don't want to have weapons, then by all means, you know, they can choose not to do it. But the Constitution guarantees the right, the, the people who live there, the right to do so. To throw back to Michael's point, two different countries. There are people who live in these cities who say I have a constitutional right to bear arms, and many who vote away that, but you can't because the Constitution says you can't. Apparently, the Constitution is meaningless, as we're learning now. Or, as it turns out, not everyone has the same interpretation of the Constitution as you or the NRA, including the Supreme Court. Funny how that works. Sort of, with this Texas lawsuit. The important thing is, the Supreme Court ruled the Constitution itself says, you know, Article 3, they don't have standing. We'll see if these, uh, these, these uh, new lawsuits that have been filed will actually get heard on the merits because the individuals do have standing. Or they'll say, you know, uh, to, for those that are familiar, standing basically means like, if I enter into a contract with you, like my neighbor can't sue you if you break it. They're like, you're not party to this contract. Texas is, and it's interesting that, you know, the Supreme Court made their decision. They did. We'll see what that, how that plays out. In the meantime, we're seeing things like this. Andy No tweets, arrested at police raid on Portland Antifa squat on 8th of December. Police recovered stockpile of guns. Antifa and other extremists then built an autonomous zone. Now we have this tweet. Antifa's Portland autonomous zone has a militia who are armed with semi-automatic rifles and other firearms. Okay, so you're advocating for right-wingers to try and secede. But then people making an autonomous zone, you think that's bad because they're left. Like, that didn't work out for them either, bud. It's not a good idea. Why do you think it would be a good idea to try and secede from the land around you? It's incredibly stupid. So let me go back to what I said about right-wing individuals setting up checkpoints saying y'all can't come here. You think I'm just making that up and just throwing something at the wall? Just, I, I don't know, maybe some magical thing will happen. And no, I'm looking at a video of the far left having already done this. And again, it didn't last as I think we all knew it wouldn't. So what do you think you should learn from that? Should you learn that it's a bad idea to try and act like you are seceding from the area in which you reside or trying to set up your own thing outside of the U.S. government? Do you recognize that that's a bad decision? Twice now, setting up autonomous zones in cities where people with guns set up checkpoints and say, y'all can't come in. These are our rules, and they've killed people. In Seattle, a couple teenagers in a truck, they pumped 300 rounds in over a few minutes. There's, there's, you can hear the audio, pop, 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 pop. It's crazy. So when I say you will likely see right-wing individuals in uh, militias in certain areas set up checkpoints and say, this is an autonomous zone. Don't be surprised if you see more of this and you see the right doing it because they're destroying the businesses of regular Americans. How many regular people are going to be like, these CDC types, he can't come in here. We don't respect that. And maybe it's by design. Maybe it's what everybody wants, a divorce. Now, interestingly, the left and the right populace got a lot to agree on. The left came out and said, we're not going to allow this eviction. They set up an autonomous zone and they have guns and they're guarding it and they're winning and they're expanding. Why wouldn't the right do that when, the, when, when I'm talking about a community that has a sheriff who's already been given powers of law enforcement and the community tells the sheriff, we demand you protect the right for us to work and live. <laughs> it's, it's, it, in my opinion, it makes way more sense that the right would, would, would do something like the left is doing. We demand the right to infect others with disease. No step on snake. In a more controlled, organized and legitimate fashion than the left is even doing. But I'll put it this way. If the left is already doing it, it's not a long shot or it's or, or and it's not far fetched to assume at some point you will see right wing individuals doing so, something like this. 
We've already seen it. When the riots erupted, regular people, I don't even want to say right wing, took out their guns and were standing around their communities, standing guard. It's already happened. We may see the decoupling of this country because I'll tell you this. If there's one thing the populist left and right completely agree upon, over 100 million people probably at this point, is that Joe Biden is awful. Not necessarily illegitimate. That's the Trump supporters who think that. But the left, funny they hate the Joe Biden too. Capitalism. They just didn't like Trump. Uh, they, they hated Trump more. These progressive. Sure, but Biden won the presidency, so that's how it works. Voss and Raven with 20 bits. Trump supporters shot a man in Olympia today. Tim, are you outraged about that too? I'm sure he's not. Lives absolutely detest Joe Biden, but wanted him to win. Why? As many have said on social media, it's easier to overthrow a feeble old man than it is a fascist. <laughs> I think the term overthrow is pretty uh, loaded. I think it'd be more like you can talk to Joe Biden or try and get him to move on positions easier than Trump. Also, Trump isn't actively going to be, you know, making decisions that will damage the country, at There's least not from a place of power. Of capitalism. Daddy Sume with 20 bits. What if they are both feeble old men, though, right? They're both feeble old dudes. The painting of Donald Trump as, like, not an old man is so bizarre. They use the election as a way to take away the power of the right and Trump so they can more easily get what they want. Seizing land, you know, was it like a three or four block radius in Portland. And wow, three or four whole blocks, huh? How impressive. They're armed <clears throat> and they're standing guard. And with Joe Biden in the presidency, nothing will stop them. Perhaps top cop Kamala Harris might, but I'm not entirely capitalism. convinced. And if it comes down to the th low Garth 50 bits, that's literally what an election does, you chicken nugget. <laughs> Federal government trying to assert authority over these areas. When Donald Trump was trying to stop the violence, Trump supporters agreed. If in a few months Joe Biden is president and the autonomous zone in Portland has expanded completely out of the control of the local authorities, it won't be. I'd imagine Joe Biden would go and send troops to break it up. He's Joe Biden. If Joe Biden tries sending in DHS, do you know what's going to happen? Trump supporters are going to laugh and say, we don't support any of you. You're on your own. We don't care. The left will say, get out. The feds will have absolutely no support in their action. And that's when legitimacy falters. Now, I'll wrap it up with this. Maybe everything goes back to normal. Everybody got it out of their system. We're all tired. We just want to play video games and just say, fine, whatever, it's Biden. High five, shake hands, go about our business. Maybe. I don't think so because they're going to be locking everybody down and it's going to be getting, uh, they're going to be locking everybody down. That's going to make people lose it. While they're locking down conservatives, the left is freely going about their business and seizing territory with guns. At least in this small scale, sure. Do you think conservatives and Trump supporters are going to be like, oh, geez, the feds are coming in to oppress us and letting the left get away with it? No, they're going to be like, get out. But we can only wait and see. Maybe Alan West is right and people are going to follow suit. Maybe Trump would be that leader and that will be freaky. I have no idea what's going to happen. I just want to uh, wrap up uh, one, one more point. There's nothing funny you know, when I kept saying there, there, I felt like we were on the track for a civil war and people kept saying no. At what point do you say, OK, OK, at the very least, we've been on the track Maybe now we're going to get off it. Sure. But when I said two years ago, and now we're at the point where all these states are lining up against each other, the left is setting autonomous zones with guns. Aren't we closer than we were then? So I was certainly right then. And I'll say today, I think we're still on this track, but I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe everyone does calm down. People are tired of this stuff. They're just tired. And they're going to say, I don't care. But you know, it was a very tiny fraction of people who fought in the Civil War. We'll see how it plays out. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> well, I'll deal with that after we're uh, we're done.